<laughs> well, it's a glorious day. So there's only one thing to do. Let's get the bike out. And that's what we're doing today. Now, I've had it a couple of months now. This is probably the best day we've had. So I think it's time for just a quick uh, review on my first thoughts on the bike. And they are pretty much all positive. So this is a 2015 Street Triple R. It's the uh, third incarnation. The uh, Gen 3s are sometimes classed as. And it made quite a few improvements over the previous model. Mainly in weight. It's actually 6 kilograms lighter than the previous model. Due mainly to a uh, different frame and lighter wheels. A few of the different things. Um, and you can feel, I mean, the bike, the Generation 1, 2 bikes, they were light anyway, but this is so nimble, it's unbelievable. Really is a, a fantastic machine. So I guess we should start at the front of the bike. Um, the suspension now, it's got upside down 41mm KYB forks on the front. And they are pretty powerful things in the fact that when I first got the bike, the suspension was just so hard. I'm not used to such a hard suspension, not been on a sporty bike for a while. Um, you might see in the previous video where I've adjusted the, sus the suspension settings, and I've actually put them down to soft settings, not just normal. And it now rides the, the bumps a lot better. A lot better. Still, um, still needs a little bit of tweaking, I think, but we're not far from where I need to be now. Talking about suspension, the rear suspension's got the single um, shock on the back. The good thing about the R is it's very adjustable. The same with the front, you've got the rebound and compression adjustments, and on the back, rebound and compression adjustments. Now, the back I've actually got softer than soft. <laughs> because on the really bumpy roads it just it's like a buckaroo however when there's two up and there's it is two up quite a lot it's a little bit too soft so you do have to adjust that suspension uh, when you when you've got a pillion passenger and again you know the different roads if you do take this onto a track you'd have to have it on track settings but at the moment Single wise, one up for me. The soft settings are, are pretty good. I'm happy with them. Uh, While well, we're on the subject of the front of the bike, I think I've already mentioned the wheels are a lot lighter. Uh, that combined with the <laughs> amazing brakes, basically, this just stops on a penny. So we've got uh, twin 310mm discs gripped by some radial four pot calipers on the front. And again, when I first got the bike, it uh, kind of threw me a little bit by just how powerful they were. But again, just with a bit of time, you get used to them, and like one, two finger action is enough you need on the levers, really, and you've got some good stopping power there. The rear brake is again pretty good. I mean, talk to most motorcyclists, and they're probably, I'd never use the rear brake, but. I found myself using it quite a bit, especially during slow riding and, and the lightweight of this bike and the nimbleness of the bike makes slow riding really easy as well. Really, it's a perfect all round, it's a perfect beginner bike and for those who've got a bit more experience like myself, again, it's a, it's a superb bike really, really is. I'll head over to the mirrors on my favourite roads. You probably see quite a lot of these roads on my videos because they are quite superb. Staying in the front, something else that's changed are the headlights. So the early generation had the round twin headlights. These have got the more angular headlights, which I actually like. I even prefer them to the latest ones, the so they call me the ant eye ones, look like ants. But I prefer these these um, angle lights, they look really, really good. Very impressed with them. Very bright as well. 
Something that hasn't changed on the bike is the uh, clock pinnacle speedometers. It's not a bad setup. It lacks a bit from the uh, more new bikes with the TFT displays. It gives you plenty of information. Clock's a big one for me. We have a shift indicator light, which I believe is programmable. Um, miles per gallon, which is on at the moment, and as you can see, I'm averaging 52 miles per gallon. That's not bad from the um, 675cc triple engine. We have ambient air temperature, and then if you go through the mode, you've got track settings and lap timers. There's a few other things. It's not bad. Um, main thing for me is the fuel gauge and the temperature. <laughs> That's not too bad at all. As you can see at the front, I've got a few extras. I've got the GoPro camera on, sat nav, and I've taken the big wing mirrors off and put some little bar end mirrors on, which I find um, sufficient. I think that's the way for it. Sufficient. Here we go. One of the best roads in England. Gisborne to the Hall via the Blakey Ridge. The only bad thing about this road is the shape. Too many, too naive on the road. Nice try, Speed Twin, was that? Look lovely. Uh, so we're in Castleton now. Just at the start of the nice moor roads. Uh, we're also going to tell you about the bike comfort, comfort. So this bike just has a little bit more of a lean forward than the earlier um, generation models and you can feel it just a little bit more sporty that in the high gear high first gear keeps the front end down which I quite like to be honest <laughs> I'm not a weedy king but generally yeah it's nice and comfortable we've only done about 100 mile trips and it's not been a problem at all and that's the, with the pillion as well and I've already mentioned the fact that the bike's just so light and nimble, this slow ride and stuff is a breeze. Clutch has got a nice feel to it. Very easy to ride around town. So again, it's good at everything. It's good around town and it's good on the twisties and it's probably good on the track as well. On the motorways with the original fairing, uh, maybe not so. I'll put the Puig, Puigi, don't know you pronounce it, screen on it. Uh, it works brilliant, it keeps the wind off you quite a lot. However, I think it does ruin the look of the bike. It loses that aggressiveness, I think. But then the day, this is going to be used for touring quite a lot. Uh, hence the tank bag, the panniers I've got, uh, you name it. Hopefully we'll be going to Ireland in a couple of months time, so watch the channel for that one. Should be a nice little ride out, we've been to Ireland quite a lot, the Wild Atlantic Way. If you think Scotland's good, if you want to try Ireland, believe me, it's amazing. Right, and we should have enjoyed the road now. Look at that scenery.
sheep, sheep. Oh god, I hate sheep. Shapes, a lot of shape. Oh, come on, shapes, you got to move from my spot. This is my spot, you've got to move. I was going to do a bit of filming here, but I think there's a family of sheep who were, would rather I wasn't here. That doesn't seem too bad, mate. That's pulled over. Uh, I'll just keep looking at the bike, really. So, what else has changed on the Generation 3 model? Uh, I think I mentioned the frame had changed. It's still aluminium, but it's got less parts in it, uh, less welds. So the old tubular subframe has changed for new aluminium. It's a cast subframe now. That's pretty good, I like it. Uh, one of the other distinctive modifications is now the uh, exhaust placement. discs which also have ABS. Um, the sheep can hear me above all this grazing from the sheep. The new screen as you can see the Kirigi uh, does make a difference, it does work however it does take away a bit of the aggressive look of the bike in my opinion. Well, I enjoyed that little run out. I hope you did too. Hope you found the little review useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, as for the bike, yeah, I'm so glad I bought this bike. It was definitely the right choice. I'd recommend this bike to anybody, whether it's your first bike or, well, your last one. <laughs> it's so light and nimble. It's just, it's amazing for, for what it is. It really is. And the engine, is great. Uh, well, for now, I'll leave you with that. And I'll catch you on the next video. Ciao.